everybody. How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for watching. Join hands with Evan. I'm Blue Tap. And I uh, just welcome everybody that's here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Um, let's see. I can see comments on both Facebook and YouTube. So please leave me a comment if you're watching so I'll know that you're here. I don't have any way of seeing. Oh, Renee. Hi, Renee. So good to see you. Uh, I hope you're doing well. I still am praying for you and your family, your parents. So be sure and uh, let me know how things are going, sister. Thank you for showing up. Um, so any, and anybody else, if you're here, just leave me a comment. If you want to tell me your name, tell me where you're from. Hermit's Way Homestead, that's my husband. Thank you for watching. Um, so anyway, thank you so much, everybody. Um, Dina, hey, blue tap. Here, I'll put some put some of these out so you can see. I don't know who you, do I know you? Well, welcome. I'm so glad. I don't think I've seen you here before. And here's here is my friend, Renee. This is my this is my husband, Joe, uh, hi blue from Rapid City, South Dakota, I believe. Um, so welcome, 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 Betty. Oh, my sister, Betty. Hello. Hello, lady. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you again, everybody for showing up. So, uh, keep sending me comments. I will, uh, periodically watch the comments and, and, uh, I really, one thing I really love about doing live streams is that it allows me to talk to all of you in real time. And I just love that so much. I was terrified to start doing the live streams at first because of just the, you know, what if I say the wrong thing? What if I mess up? You know, it's, it's a lot of pressure because it's live, you know, but um, I've just been loving it. And I love the aspect of being able to speak to you uh, and for you to be able to respond. And I just love that interaction. So, so talk to me, talk to me, let me know that you're out there. Okay. So Let's see, before I get started, I just want to give you a, a little quick, uh, tell you this, um, last week was the very first time that I did one of these live streams that my computer did not freeze up and, and I didn't uh, lose everything because my computer freezing up. So that did not happen last week, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen again. So I just want to make sure you know, I'm way out in the country and uh, I do have um, Starlink internet, which, you know, Elon Musk's uh, uh, satellite internet, which actually works really well, but we're still out in the country. And so I think that occasionally I'm going to have problems with everything freezing up. So if you are watching and you see me freeze up, you should still be able to hear me. And what I'm going to do is that I shut everything off and come back in. It takes less than two minutes and I will be back. So, um, so if I freeze up, just hang with me and I should be back right away. Uh, at least I hope so. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> okay. Eternal flame. Uh, here waiting to see if the heretic hunters will show up for an, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I actually was wondering too, uh, if they would show up for this one. Um, oh yes, that is true. <laughs> especially not me. I am especially not perfect. Okay. So I want to start off with a, uh, a homestead update. And so here is my little, my little homestead update intro. Here we go. <music> Okay, that's our farm and a picture of me and my husband at the end. So, so what I want to show you. So last week I told this long, long story about this chicken that came back to life after from the dead. And I thought that was the greatest story. But then later when I was watching it, I was like, oh my gosh, this story is so long. I love the story, but even I was bored. So anyway, I'm going to try to keep these really short. So I'm very sorry if you, if you were bored listening to that long story about the chicken last week. So anyway, here's what I want to show you. I just want to show you. You, um, our goats. Um, if you've been watching my live streams, I've been, you know, that I've been showing you as every week a little bit of them. They were born about four weeks ago, so we've got these two goat babies. And um, so uh, they're about a month old now. And uh, so tomorrow is the big day. So when we let them out, so far they've been back in their stalls. We have to keep them back there until they get big enough so that they can't get out of the fencing um, in the, the main fenced in area where all of our other goats and sheep and our livestock guard dog are. So tomorrow is the big day. And so it's always a little bit, makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, the big problem would possibly be our livestock guard dog. You got to make sure he understands that these new baby goats are part of his herd that he protects 
checks and not something new, um, a new invader that he would need to get rid of. So that's always the danger. <laughs> so we have been slowly getting him acquainted with them through the fence. Um, and he's fine. So we're not worried about him now. Uh, he's a good good livestock guard dog. But the, now the worry is all the other goats because they can be really, really mean to each other. And so here you see them uh, meeting the other goats through the fence. So we're trying to get them to know each other slowly so they won't be too mean to the new guys when we let them out tomorrow. So you can see Finchie is a little girl here with the, with the, uh, the, the spots. And this is her brother, um, Chippy. <laughs> they're just so adorable and here's their mama ibis okay so that's the goat so that's tomorrow so maybe say a little prayer that it all goes well <laughs> and next week i'll let you know how that went on i'm gonna try to um make do some video and so then i want to tell a quick little story of something that happened this morning so let me go to this part of the video okay so this morning i went out to feed the animals and there was a little bitty baby duck just wandering around all by itself and so I picked him up and went looking around to try to find out where did this little baby duck came from. He obviously had just hatched. I couldn't find the mom anywhere. Could not find uh, any sign of a nest or a, a, a newly hatched egg. So I so we have this broody hen that you just saw um, in saw in the the video, and uh, she is laying on her own eggs. Now he is not her baby. Uh, because her eggs have not hatched. So every once in a while, you can get these hens to take on, uh, kind of adopt another one. So that's what I did. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes the, the hens will attack the baby that doesn't belong to them. But fortunately, so I just set him next to her. And fortunately, this story is a happy ending because she has accepted him. And she has been kind of uh, taking care of him and was cooing at him immediately. So and you can see her eggs underneath her. Um, and she and she is protecting him now. And so this is her. This was this morning. And then later, oh, you can see here there was a there was a male duck that was getting too close. And there she is giving him the warning. She's saying, get away. This is my baby now. And then this is her later today, this afternoon. So she's taken she's completely adopted this little duck. And uh, so that's just a, a happy ending to this story. Okay, so that is my homestead update today. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, okay, oh my goodness, there's so many comments. This just makes me so happy. Okay, let me get rid of the homestead update banner. And go back to the comments, see if there's anything to do, do, do. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, Renee says, adorable. I know. I think those goats are so, so adorable. Okay. So here is what, let's get into it. Here's what we're talking about today. We are continuing our discussion about the gift of prophecy and uh, looking into scripture to see if we, if the gift of prophecy is something that we can safely believe in today. Is it a gift that, that is active today? that we can practice and that that um, that the Holy Spirit is actually engaging with us in the gift, using the gift of prophecy today. Um, and so I I'll tell you right now, I believe it is. Um, I believe that that uh, the gift of prophecy is one of the most important gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it's a way that he talks to us today. Uh, and um, so what we what we have been doing, talking about so far, two weeks ago, I started going through scripture and we started off in Acts. And we went through and looked at all the different times in Acts when Luke, the writer of Acts, described the way that the gift of prophecy was used in the early church. And um, we see in Acts that it was a regular part of church services in the first Christian churches. And that uh, not only that, but that it was that these people who had the gift of prophecy, they were respected members of the church and the people listened to them. So it was definitely um, accepted as a way that the Holy Spirit spoke to uh, the church, the early Christians uh, in the book of Acts. And it was a way that according to uh, what Paul tells us in his letters, that the gift of prophecy, the reason for it was for edifying the church, for instructing us, for strengthening us, and for giving us unity in the body of Christ. So after that, we we started looking through the, the letters of Paul. And, um, and what we saw there is that every single time that Paul lists all the different gifts of the Spirit and the offices of the Spirit in the church, he always includes prophecy. In 1 Corinthians 14, he spends a lot of time talking about the way the gift of prophecy is supposed to be used in church services. And he compares 
the gift of prophecy with the gift of tongues. And he says the gift of prophecy is much more important. He says that we are to desire, we are to desire the gifts, but most of all prophecy. So according to Paul, the gift of prophecy is a very important gift of the spirit. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so that was two weeks ago. Then last week, what we did was we looked at the arguments of cessationists. So cessationists are people, Christians, who believe that the gifts of the spirit, specifically prophecy, um, are not in use anymore today. That that after the uh, first the apostles and the first Christians died, then those gifts died along with them and they weren't used anymore. And so what we did last week was we looked at the scriptures that the cessationists used to back up their belief that the gifts of the spirit are not in use anymore today. And, um, and we tried to look at those very open-mindedly. We never want to look at just one side. We want to look at all sides of the argument uh, with an open mind. And so um, it is my opinion, uh, the only thing that I can find, the only scriptures that the cessationists use regularly in two verses, Hebrews 1, 1 and 2, two verses that they use. And so we looked at that last week. Um, and I admit that I can see how they could come to the conclusion they come to from those two verses. So, but as they, a lot of them like to say, read the whole Bible, which we do. And so what we have are two verses that could maybe possibly suggest what they believe that the gifts of the spirit are no longer in use. And you weigh that against two verses against all the scriptures I spent reading the first, first week and a half. Um, in the Acts and all the times Paul talks about it. So we've got all of this writing, this mass of, of writing um, that's, that seems to very clearly support the use of the gift of prophecy today. So weigh it out. I'm not going to tell you how to believe. You just look at, you look at all the evidence, which side has the most compelling evidence based on what we find in the scripture. Okay, so you know how I feel. All right, so today what I want to do, I'm going to look at uh, some specific scriptures that a lot of cessationists and particularly this group of people, podcasters that I have had run-ins with that call themselves the heretic hunters. So if you've been following my channel for any time at all, you, you've heard me talk about this. If you were following my channel back in the beginning of this year, you even saw this unfolding as it happened. So back in October, uh, one of these guys, these podcasters, they call themselves the heretic hunters. They are not necessarily cessationists, but they their their whole their their whole goal, what they their entire uh, podcast YouTube channels are based on going after people that um, uh, that claim to be modern day prophets, people who believe in the gift of prophecy, people who practice. Uh, prophetic giftings and they go after them and they make the only thing I can call them is hit videos. So they make these hit videos uh, about them, trying to expose them, trying to shut them down, trying to silence them and to show how wrong they are for practicing the gifts of prophecy. So, and I, the, the reason I know about this is because one of these guys made a bunch of videos about me and he started back in October and I didn't know about it until uh, in January. So he'd already made a bunch of videos about me, hit videos, right? Telling people to shut me down, to stop me, I'm dangerous. Uh, simply because I believe in the gift of prophecy. I do not even claim to be a prophet myself. Um, so anyway, so that's how all this started. Uh, this guy that made all these videos about me happened to come to my channel and left this, this message saying, oh, you're a prophet lover and I'm going to make this video about you and come defend yourself. Uh, and so that's how I'm like, what? what is going on? And so I prayed about it and prayed about it. And I believe that God was telling me to go ahead and accept his invitation. And so, uh, so that is how I ended up uh, on his channel during the premiere of this video, uh, another video that he had made about me. And, um, and so while I was there, um, so the way these work, the premiere videos, as you can see, you watch the video, it was pre-recorded, but then the chat room is live. And so I was in the chat room. So he was there so he could talk, we could talk back and forth. And then all of his followers were in there as well. And I will tell you, this is some of the mean, the, the meanest group of people <laughs> that I have ever encountered in my life. Some of these people are so mean and they are just very hateful. Um, there's just insult after insult after insult. Some of them, a lot of them don't even stick to the topic. They uh, want to attack me about the way I look, uh, which what does that have to do with anything? So anyway, but my reason for being there is not to attack back, 
not to attack them. I and mean, I'm not, I'm really trying, not trying to attack them now. I'm explaining my experience with these people. I love them all with the love of Jesus Christ and I forgive them. No matter what they have done to me, no matter what they have said about me, I do not take it personally and I love them and I pray for them. All of these guys, especially the guy that made all those videos about me, I do pray for him, pray for him and his family. Uh, and then we interacted with each other for several months. Uh, we do not do interact with each other now because he just could not stop attacking me. But but anyway, OK, so um, so I went on there and I'm trying to be very nice and just uh, forgiving and to show them the love of Jesus Christ, no matter even though they said some very, very mean things to me. Um, and I think I did a really good job. He even said later, he was like, it took a lot of guts for her to come on here. Um, and she handled herself very well. Some of his other followers said the same thing. So I think they were surprised that I really, that I was willing to come on there. And, and I, you know, no matter what they said, I just responded with love and, and forgiveness. Um, so anyway, so that's what happened way back in October. And since then, I tried for several, many months, actually, to reach out to him and to be friends and, you know, just uh, no matter what, to continue just to reaching out with love and forgiveness. Um, he seemed to be coming around for a while um, and he would come to my channel and we would in just interact with each other. And it seemed to actually be uh, friendly for a while. And then he started uh, saying mean things to other people on my other commenters on my channel. And so I called him out because of that. And he got mad and he made some more videos about me. So that's what happened. So I have not communicated with this guy in a long time. I don't even know if he's made any more, but any more videos, videos of me in the past couple of months. But um, and since he he started doing that, then a bunch of his followers uh, latched onto my channel. And one of them has actually still been around in the past couple of weeks. It looks like he is not here anymore. He's not here today. So I'm actually kind of happy about that because <laughs> those of you who's, who've been with me the past couple of weeks, this guy he called himself garden lover and he was just really rude. And he was on here saying all these mean things. And again, trying to just show him the love of Christ. And, uh, but I had already decided that I was going to um, just stop giving him time because I'm sure it's not very fun for everybody else to, to uh, watch me try to engage with this guy when he's just insulting and insulting. So, so anyway, all right, <clears throat> let me see. I'm going to look at the comments real quickly. What do we got here? What do we got here? See if there's anything else. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, know. Okay, let's see. Oh, let's see. Okay, here's another one from Eternal Flame. Don't let these so-called heretic hunters deter you, Blue. Every person has their own personal journey with God, and you're on a beautiful path. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, thank you. Okay, oh, here's Ramona. Uh, oh, okay, well, Ramona, I'm praying right now for your battery issues. I just pray that your batteries will hold out so you can stay with us. Uh, let's see. And Renee, why would God not use prophets today? He's the same God today as he was at creation. Praise him. Amen. Renee, I agree with you. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What else? Do we have anything else? Any? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, oh, wait. <laughs> He's here. Okay. Not going to talk to So our, our troll is here again. So hello, garden lover. Welcome. I was just talking about you. I don't know if you heard me. I'm actually not going to talk to you anymore. This is the last thing I'm going to say to you. Um, so, but I will, I, I had a little thing I wanted to say to the rest of you if he showed up today. And so he is here today. So what I want to tell you is that, um, so this guy is from the original. So he's been, he has been hounding me for months, coming to my channel, throwing out all these insults, saying these mean things to me. And every time he does, I try to respond in love. I have given him time here on my channel, in my live streams. I have tried to engage with him respectfully. I have given him scripture after scripture after scripture to back up my position. And he has never once given me one single scripture, not even a half a scripture, not even a phrase from the Bible to back up the things that he says and why he thinks I'm so wrong about everything. And so at this point, I'm shaking the dust off my feet and I am not going to give him any more time. Um, so this is all we can do. Um, I, I try and try with these people. And, and a lot of people will say, don't ever engage the trolls. And the reason is, is exactly this. It doesn't usually seem to make any difference. Um, in fact, sometimes if you're nice to them, they just continue getting more and more angry. And he has just continued. Like I, I, I posted this, this video, upcoming video a couple of days ago, and he was immediately on there just saying all this stuff. I hadn't even, the video hadn't even come out yet. So it's, it's almost getting to creepy stalker level at this point. So here's what it's like. I'm going to say this and then I'm moving on. That's the last thing I'm, I'm going to, last time I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about this particular person. Um, so here's what it's like. So this guy, 
It's like he's coming to my yard. He's on my property. He's in my channel. I have never gone to his channel to say anything mean to him. I have never responded with any kind of insults to him at all, except he thinks calling him a troll is an insult. Um, <clears throat> so he's come on some into my front yard and he keeps throwing rocks at me. Every insult he throws, he's throwing rocks at me, throwing rocks at my house. And then when I politely say, please stop throwing rocks at me, then he responds like, why are you being so mean to me? You're a mean girl. That's what he called me the other day. So, so anyway, that's what it's like. Uh, I've been asking him politely, please stop throwing rocks at me. So at this point, I'm just going to ignore him. So unless he says something mean to someone else, and then I will block him. I'm not going to block him now because he just changes his, uh, he changes his profile name and then comes on with a different profile name. So it, it's, it's kind of weird, but, but anyway, okay, moving on. Not going to take up any more of your time, everybody else with this guy. Um, all right, so here's what I want to do today. So I told you the story about the uh, about this heretic hunters. This is a group of of people, these podcasters. They have YouTube channels, and what they do, their entire YouTube channel is composed of making these videos about people who claim to be prophets today, who um, uh, believe in prophecy, and who exercise prophetic um, pro prophetic gifts. And, um, and they attack them and they try to expose them. And, and, and in my case, uh, one of, uh, they, they say mean things to them, but in my case, one of the followers of this guy, this guy that made all these videos about me, has actually tried to hurt me in real life. And I've talked about this a few times, can't tell a lot of details, but this person, one of his followers has skills that has allowed him to try to put me out of business, my day job, the thing that I do to make a living. And at this point has cost me tens of thousands of dollars in lost business, um, in uh, lost funds, because I've had to uh, put all this money into security teams and buy a new server and all this stuff that I've had to do in my day job. So it, it has not only uh, I don't care if people come on here and say mean things to me. I really don't. That doesn't bother me at all. But this guy in response to the guy that the original one, I'm not even saying his name who made all these hit videos about me. And he looks at the camera and he says, shut her down. She's dangerous. We need to shut her up. You need to make her be quiet. That's the kind of stuff he said about me. And one of his followers took him literally and has damaged my life in, in life altering ways. So I'm just going to say this. So these guys are not only going out and saying mean things about people, they are trying to destroy people's lives. And in some in some instances, like these big people they're going after, like Timothy Dixon, Dixon and Robin Bullock and Amanda Grace, they, they're not going to hurt them. They have the resources. They have the all of the funding and the, the following that that nothing these little heretic hunters do is going to hurt them. But they're also going after little bitty people like me, little bitty people like uh, like my friend Kim Robbins, uh, Kim Robinson. Um, you know, people just just regular everyday people. I'm not rich. You know, this has affected the way this guy has attacked me, attacked me, has really affected my life in, in life changing ways. All right. So let's get back to this. So what I want to do. So I've watched a lot of their videos because back when I was interacting with them, I wanted to know what they were about. And so I read, watched a lot of their videos. And so they all kind of follow a pattern. They have specific scriptures that they use to back up and justify their behavior of, of the way they believe and, and why they go after these people that they claim are false prophets. And so what I want to do today is I want to look at the scriptures that they use and kind of pull those apart. OK, and um, and see, because I believe that they're using these scriptures incorrectly. They are reading things into these scriptures that are not there. And so so that's what I want to do. And so before I get started with this, I'm going to start with this scripture right here. This is Matthew seven. This is the biggest scripture that they use. Look what I can do here, guys. <laughs> Look what I fear. Oh, Renee. <laughs> Renee, I left your comment up there the whole time. I didn't even know that it was up there. So let's see. Oh, now I got to find it and see if I can remove it. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> Her comment was just there the whole time. <laughs> I'm still just learning how to use this StreamYard program. Okay, back to what I was saying. All right. So uh, this is the scripture that they all use the most. They love this scripture. This is Matthew 7, 15 through 20. One of them actually, the name of his YouTube channel is Matthew 7, 15. So his, this, this is the one, this is the big one that they use to um, justify their behavior. So let's look at it. So before I get into this, though, I want to 
I want to say something. I do not talk about this a lot because I know it can kind of sound braggy, but I want to give you my background so you understand why I have, I believe I have the right to do what I'm getting ready to do. Okay. I went to college for 10 years and I have multiple degrees. My master's degree is in uh, English literature. My rhetoric by uh, my PhD uh, work is in rhetoric and composition. And now that is the study of language, the study of communication, linguistics. I particularly, I studied first and second language acquisition, what happens in the brain, how we actually communicate with each other. So I have spent 10 years of my life in higher education, learning how to critically interpret literature. OK, and so I bring all of that education into my reading of the Bible. When I study the Bible, I am reading it critically based on my education, learning how to uh, interpret literature critically. OK, and so um, when you are using those same skills that I spent all that time learning to interpret the Bible, it is called exegesis. So I'm going to show you exegesis. OK, and this is a critical explanation or interpretation of a text, especially of scripture. So that's just another word for what I learned how to do when I spent 10 years in college. So I just want to make sure everybody understands. I do have uh, a foundation. I have a, I have a backing here to uh, allow me to talk with it, talk intelligently about the scriptures that I'm getting ready to, to take apart and to examine with you here. OK. All right, so let's look. There's just so much going on at once here. Hide the banner. Okay, go back to the comments. Okay, here we go. Let's look at this. This is Matthew 7. Matthew 7, 15 through 20. Now, this is Jesus. It's Jesus talking to his disciples. Um, and he says this. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. All right. And so what these heretic hunters will do, they will show a clip of somebody that they're picking on like Cat Kerr or Robin Bullock, and then they will read the scripture and they'll say, see, See, there it is. There's the proof. And so what really is going on here? What is Jesus saying? Let's pick this apart, shall we? So he says, first of all, watch out for false prophets. OK, so we know from this that Jesus is saying there are false prophets. They exist. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. OK, so they lie. So, so far we know one, there's prophet. There are false prophets. Number two, they are liars. And then now he gives us the test. Here's the test so that we can determine who are they? How can we tell if someone's a false prophet? And here's what he says. By their fruit, you will recognize them by their fruit. And so everything here, Jesus's test that he is giving us, it all hinges upon the definition of this word fruit. <laughs> and here's where the heretic hunters go astray, I believe. Here's where they screw it all up because what they do is they try to, they, they seem to think that they can just put any old definition on this word fruit that they want to. But let me tell you, this is uh, exegesis 101 or literary, critical literary interpretation 101. This is the basics. If an author of a literary work that you are studying, if an author gives you a definition within the text of the work that you are studying, then you must use that definition that they have given you. So every time, so we're talking about the word fruit, okay? So if we get a definition for the word fruit within the text, within the New Testament, then every single time we see that word, that same word, you have to assume and, and interpret the rest of that literature by the definition that the author gives you, because you have to assume that since the author gave you that definition, that that's what they meant, when they use that same word in another place in their writing. So we don't always have the luxury of a very specific definition of some sort of ambiguous term, some kind of word that we might not really understand what the definition of the intended definition is. But we do have a definition of fruit. 
And so this is where these guys go wrong because they try to put some other definition of fruit on this word. They try to make up all different kinds of things that that they that that could mean. And uh, but they are not ever. I have never seen them once looking at the definition of fruit that we are given in the New Testament. So let's look at it right now. And this, of course, is in Galatians 5, 5, 22 and 23. And this is from Paul's letters to the Galatians. And he gives us the definition of the fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things. There is no law. So the only definition of fruit that we get in the New Testament is right here in right here <laughs> in Paul's letter to the Galatians. So what are these things? Does it say the fruit is if people say something and then it doesn't come true? It Does it say if people uh, practice prophecy? Uh, if they say something you disagree with? No, it is not in there at all. The definition is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It is behavior. It is talking about the way people behave, okay? Um, then let's look at one other scripture, okay, because notice that this definition starts with the word love, starts with the word love. And then at the end of the same chapter, Paul says there are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Also, Jesus, in his own words, tells us when he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He says, love, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and spirit, and love your neighbor as yourself. So according to Jesus himself, the most important fruit of the spirit is love, okay? So let's look at the definition of love, because this is another thing that I have heard these heretic hunters say to justify their hateful behavior. They will say, well, it's loving to go tell these people where they're wrong, to show them where they're wrong. Okay, so fortunately, we have a very detailed definition of love in Paul's letters as well. This is to the Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record, record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Memorize this scripture. I believe that this scripture is one of the most important scriptures in the entire New Testament because Jesus told us himself that love is the most important commandment. And here we have our definition. So what I want to do, this is my challenge to you, any of you people who are familiar with these heretic hunters and you have watched their videos, I want you to look at this scripture, point their own, look at this scripture, and I want you to compare, consider the behavior of the way these people act, these heretic hunters, the way I act when I'm being attacked, the way the people they attack act. So let's talk about Kat Kerr. If you're familiar with Kat Kerr, I actually really like her. Uh, she's somebody that is attacked mercilessly, mercilessly by these guys and by some very big name people because um, she's kind of wacky. I admit it. She's kind of crazy. Seems kind of crazy. But um, according to this test, because remember, Jesus's test, let's go back to the scripture, Jesus's test is you will recognize them by their fruit, okay? And then we have our definition of fruit and our definition of love. Kat Kerr passes this test. She passes this test because of all of her videos I've watched, I have never once seen her act in a way that is not in alignment with the fruit of the spirit. Every single time she's attacked, she responds with love, with forgiveness. She is always demonstrating the fruit of the spirit. Okay. Now let's look, we're right here back on Jesus, what Jesus says in, in Matthew 7. So I, I want you to notice something because what Jesus says here, he does not give us any way to set, to tell who is a true prophet. Okay. So I'm not saying by defending Kat Kerr, I am not saying that I believe she's a true prophet. I don't know. I don't know that. And I don't think that it's necessarily our place to run around trying to determine who's true and who isn't right here. I don't, not the way that it's being done, not in a way that is not in alignment with the fruit of the spirit. Okay. All we are told here from the words of Jesus, this is all he is telling us is how to be able to recognize a false prophet. 
And Kat Kerr passes this test. Doesn't mean she's a true prophet, but it does mean that according to this test and what Jesus said in Matthew 7, Kat Kerr passes this test. Okay, so let's look at one more scripture. This is the other one I want to look at that they use. And I love, love, love the scripture. So this is from John. Um, <clears throat> First John. So I love John. He is my, that's my favorite gospel is the gospel of John. Um, he wrote the gospel of John much later, years and years later than the first three gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And so one of the reasons why I love it so much, because we have a lot of extra insight and explanation behind the scenes of what was really happening, explanations from John in the gospel of John that we don't get in the first three. And I think the reason for this is because uh, because John, since it was written later, John had the, the benefit of all these years of the Holy Spirit living inside of him as a believer in Jesus. And that during that time, the Holy Spirit is teaching him, instructing him. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Um, and so I believe that he had a lot more insight when he was writing the book of John than what we got from the first three Gospels. Now, they're all the inspired word of God. We can learn so much from all of them. But I, that's my favorite one. Okay, and so this is from 1 John. So then we have three letters from John toward the end of the New Testament. And so here's what he says here. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So he says the same thing Jesus said. He says there are false prophets. Yes, one of the things these, um, some of the heretic hunters uh, people, their followers that have come and I've engaged with, and they, they'll ask me, well, do you believe there's any false prophets? Do you think everybody's a true prophet? You know, and, and so my answer is yes, of course, there are false prophets. Absolutely. Jesus said there are false prophets. Paul said it. Uh, John said it. Peter said it. Yes, there are false prophets. But so far, everything we have looked at, um, it is not saying, it is not proving what these heretic hunters seem to think. They, at least that Matthew 7 passage is, they, it does not say what they think it says. Okay, so back to this one. Uh, John says, oh, and John gives us a test. Look at this. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. So we have this great test from John. It's a little bit different than the test Jesus told us. Jesus said by their fruit. Okay, we talked about that. But now look at this test. What is John saying here? So first of all, notice what he says. He starts off with the positive. So this is how you recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. So this is talking about people who say, who agree, as I do, that, that Jesus Christ is God, come in the flesh. He is the son of God. He is the only way to salvation. There is no other way to God and to salvation, but through the blood of Jesus. So everyone who acknowledges that is from God. And that means that the Holy Spirit is inside of them. They are telling the truth. Now, this does not tell us if they are a true prophet. Again, just like Jesus's test, this does not... Give us a way to determine who is a true prophet, okay? But we know that if somebody says that Jesus is God and he is the only way of salvation, they are not the spirit of the Antichrist. Because the next thing he says is that every spirit that does not acknowledge that Jesus is not, or that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. So this is a really specific test, folks. It doesn't tell us how to tell who is a true a prophet, but it does tell us how to determine someone who does not have the spirit of God and who is exhibiting the spirit of the Antichrist. So that is serious. That is serious stuff. And so what do we have here? So I will tell you, there's a lot of people who are masking, masquerading around, calling themselves Christians who fail this test. They fail this test because this is this woke ideology that has reared its ugly head in the church. These are people who say this wokeness, who believe that there are all these different ways to get to God and that you do not need the blood of Christ. That is the spirit of the Antichrist. Anyone who teaches that, I will say, I will boldly say they are not from God. They are not prophets. They are exhibiting the spirit of the Antichrist. But here's the thing, guys. 
every single person that I have seen these heretic hunters make videos about, Robin Bullock, Kat Kerr, Hank Kuhneman, uh, Timothy Dixon, Amanda Grace, uh, who are some of the others? There's so many of them. Every single one of them that I'm familiar with, they all claim that Jesus is from God, that Jesus is the only way to salvation. They all exhibit a knowledge of the Bible. They all claim that Jesus has come from God. So according to that, this does not mean that they are true prophets, but they are not from the Antichrist. They are not exhibiting a spirit of the Antichrist. They are, they are recognizing the spirit of God. It says, you, it says, this is how you can recognize the spirit of God. So they all pass the, the first John test. Every single one of them pass this test. So I think that's very, very important to keep in mind. Okay, so that is my point there. Let me take a moment and look at some of the some of the comments and see if there's anything to discuss. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, my husband is talking. My husband is going back and forth with our our little our little loving troll. Oh, thank you, my my wonderful husband. Because I'm not going to talk to him anymore. Okay. Oh yeah, Betty. Yeah, I, yeah, he is on YouTube. Okay. Oh, Vicky. Oh, I love you, sister. This is one of my sisters in in the real world. That uh, you're all my sisters and brothers, but but uh, she's somebody that that I actually know in real life, and so I just love her so much. Hello. Okay, let's see. Oh, the Christian counterpoint. Hello, the Christian counterpoint. Hola to you. I do not know who you are. I've never seen you before, but you're welcome, welcome. Okay. Oh, Heather, Heather's back. My sister, she's another one of my sisters in, in Branson, Missouri here. We love you, sister. Guard, what? Guardians of the YT with your black horse. Okay, I don't know. I don't know if that's another troll. I'm not sure what he means. Okay, what else do we have? Where else do we have? No, 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 no. James Webb. Hello. Yes, Jesus warned of many false prophets. I don't know if you're new here, James, if you just got on here. We talked about Matthew 7 before, uh, a little bit earlier today. So we did talk about Jesus's words. Um, okay, let's see. Do, 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 do. I don't want to take up too much time. I don't have my glasses on, so it's hard, kind of hard to see. I tried wearing my glasses in the first couple of these, and it's just too much uh, reflection. Oh, my goodness, you guys, this is just wonderful. There's so many, so many comments. I actually can't keep up with them all right now. Okay. All right. There's a couple more things I want to say. 43. Oh, we're almost out of time. Okay. Let's see. What else? What else? What else? Let's see if I want to, uh, if I want to say any more here or if we want to just save the rest of this for next week. Okay. No, I'm going to say one more thing. Okay. So, so we've got these two tests. We got the test of Jesus about the fruit in Matthew seven. We got this test. Uh, from John, um, looking at do they who do they who do they say that Jesus is? That's who is the identity of Jesus Christ? That's John's test. Very very important. So both of these show you how to maybe tell if someone is a false prophet, but it doesn't tell you how to know who is a true prophet. So what are we to do? How are we to recognize who is a true prophet? Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about that. It's very important. Um, first of all, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Do I want to tell the scripture? Okay. First of all, what I want to do, I'm trying to think what I want to do next. Okay. Now, here we go. There's just one way, guys. The, 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 the gifts of the spirit have changed. Everything is different now that Jesus came here and then he ascended back up into heaven. And then after Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down. So everything is so different than it was in the Old Testament times. Because back then, during the Old Testament, the, we had our prophets. And so it was just few and far between these people that God would select for the Holy Spirit to give them words as they were moved along by at the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is what we're told how they worked in the Old Testament. And uh, but it doesn't work exactly the same way anymore. And here's why, because now after Pentecost, every single person, every single person who is a believer in Jesus Christ, we all have the Holy Spirit wasn't like that in the Old Testament times. We all have the Holy Spirit. So in one way, we all could get messages from the Holy Spirit. We all could exercise the gift of prophecy. 
in a way. Now, I do believe because of the way Paul talks about it in his letters, I do believe that there is a gift of prophecy and that some people do have a, a deeper, stronger gifting in this area. But I think that all of us are capable of getting messages from the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit has is now inhabiting every single believer in Christ. And the reason for the Holy Spirit is to continue the work that Jesus started when he was here in physical form. And that is to instruct us, to guide us, to uh, to edify the church. OK, this is what Paul says. Um, and uh, so so anyway, so it's different now. It's different now. Um, and, and, and a lot of people, so there are, there are millions of us who are getting, I believe, getting prophetic words and some people have bigger platforms than others, but the Holy Spirit can speak to each of us. So how do we determine who to listen to what is true and what isn't? And there's only one way right here, the Bible. This is my Bible, my old Bible that is covered with coffee stains that I've been using for 40 years. This is the only way folks. So one of the reasons why the cessationists get so nervous when uh, they encounter people who are exercising prophetic gifts is because it's messy, because it's messy and because they think because we can be wrong and because they think that what we're trying to do is to negate this word. And I'm telling you that the only way the gift of prophecy works today is along with this word. Any word that it comes to a person today is in no way equal to this Bible. This Bible is the foundation of everything we believe. There is nothing after the last word, the last period of revelation, nothing that comes to any one of us today is on the same level as this word of God, the holy inspired word of God. I believe that. And I tell you what, every single person that I've ever watched that, that, that exercises prophetic gifts, they say the same thing. Hank Kuhneman, Amanda Grace, Timothy Dixon, uh, Kat Kerr, all of these people, Robin Bullock, all of these people say that they believe in the word of God. I've never heard a single one of them say that the words that they believe they are getting from God are on the same level of truth as the word of God. So the only way that you can know if messages that you are getting are possibly from God, from the Holy Spirit, is if you know this book. There's no way around it. You must know this book. If you are trying to exercise and walk in the gifts of the Spirit, in the prophetic gifts, without knowing this word, then you are in dangerous territory because you will be blown around by every wind of doctrine and you will have no foundation of truth. This is our foundation of truth. Okay? So what I'm telling you, people, is that the cessationist fear that what we're trying to do by exercising prophetic gifts is negate this word. That is not what we're trying to do. It only works if you know this word. So I'm going to end with this. I want to encourage everybody, everybody to read this book. I read this book constantly. I study it every day. I read it cover to cover every single year. I have been reading this book cover to cover for so long that I don't even remember how many times I've read it. OK, every single year and I study it. And now what I do every year is I invite people to read along with me through the Bible cover to cover every year. This year, I've got 35 people reading along with me. I'm going to do it again next year. So if you want to get in on that, just keep following me and I will tell you how to get involved and read through the Bible together with a group of people. So but you don't if you're not in the word, I want to encourage you. This is my last thing I'm going to say today. Please get in the word. Nothing replaces this. Nothing replaces it. No feeling from the Holy Spirit. No word from the Holy Spirit can take the place of this book. You've got to know it. If you want to know that you're walking in the truth, you've got to know this book. Study it. Study it. It's so important. And if you don't, if you're intimidated to read cover to cover, there's an easy way to get into the Bible. These days, there's no excuse not to be in that Bi in the Bible. And it's on your phone. It's on your phone. I encourage you to get the U version app and check out the devotionals. They have thousands of devotionals uh, on every kind of topic that will allow you, help you to get into the Bible and learn how to read it and learn what God has told us in his letter to us. Okay. So please, if, if you get anything from this live stream today, if you are not already in the word, please get in the word. Um, all right. So I'm going to look at some comments again, and then I'll go ahead and end with a prayer. I'm going to start at the last comments here because there's just so much here. Let's see. 
Do, 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 do. Okay, yeah, we got, oh, hi, we, we do have some of our other or other trolls here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. What I'm looking for, and um, so I, I'm not, when I say trolls, uh, I, so the definition of a troll, the slang definition of troll is somebody who goes to somebody else's uh, social media page and they say, um, in, they say negative things or negative comments trying to elicit an emotional response. Okay. That is the definition of a troll. So I'm not trying to like throw out an insult or say you're stupid or anything like that. It's just the term for people who do that. Okay. Uh, there are people who go to other people's houses and throw rocks. <laughs> and so, so that's why I use that term. So I'm sorry if anybody's offended by that. So let's see. What do we have? What do we have? What do we have? Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, here's Renee. Here's one of my people. <laughs> <laughs> one of my people that is reading through the Bible with me. So yeah, it's okay if you get behind. It's a lot. It's a lot. But um, uh, just reading a little bit's better than nothing and reading uh, a lot's better than some. So so don't be afraid of that. Just keep going. Keep going. Yes. Test with the word. Okay. Yes. Let's see. What do we got here? What do we got here? Um, I wish I could do this faster because it's not very much fun for you guys to watch me read the comments. So I'm trying to put them up here so you can see them. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What do we got here? Yes. Oh, oh, yes. Zen. So, okay. So here's Zen Master. And he said some things that make me believe he might be kind of trollish. But I, he said something here that I totally agree with 100%. Followers of, G of Jesus are to uplift and lift up one another. Amen. That's that's so true. And that is something that Paul says in his letters that we read last week. Um, the reason for the gifts of the Spirit is so that we will reach unity in the body of Christ. Okay, so that we will edify each other. We will be strengthened. So absolutely, I completely agree with that. All right, let's see. Do, 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 do. Yes, even Satan and demons quoted scripture and know the word of God. That is so true. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. Oh, I love it that you said this. I love it that you said this, Zen Master, because this is why they both, and this will be the last thing I say, and then I'll pray and, and close. This is why we need both the scripture. Nothing replaces it. You just heard my little spiel about it. So you cannot leave here, Zen Master, and say that I'm saying you don't need the Bible because I've made it very clear that you must have this. But you also need the discernment of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So the gifts of the Spirit that, that God, that Jesus has given us through the Holy Spirit, through Pentecost, um, all the different offices of the church and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And one of them that Paul says every single time is the gift of prophecy. Those have been given to us to instruct us and teach us what this means. Because yes, even Satan and the demons, they know this. They know this better than any human being. Believe me, they know every word way more than we are, are capable of, of memorizing. Okay. They know this word. In fact, Satan, when he was tempting Jesus, he used scripture. A lot of times when I see things, and I'm sure that it's somebody who's been infiltrated by, by uh, demonic oppression, but they are claiming to be a Christian, they will quote the word and then they use it in a way to, to, uh, to hurt other people and to attack other people and to act in a way that is not in alignment with the holy, with the, with the, the fruit of the spirit. Okay. The only way you can rightly divide the word of truth in a way that is, it is in alignment with the teachings and the spirit of Jesus Christ is by using the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have to use both of them together. If you just have the Holy Spirit without the Bible, then you are being swept away by every wind of doctrine. You do not have any foundation that is stable. But on the other hand, this is what legalistic Christians do. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about legalism in the future because it's very abusive and it is very much uh, used by the enemy. Legalistic people who call themselves Christians, they have the Bible without the spirit. Okay. And they use this word in an abusive, hateful way that the enemy uses to turn people away from God, to shut the door to Jesus Christ to people who God is calling to himself. Okay. So that is my, that that's just a little taste of something we're going to talk about at length in the future. All right. Thank you so much, everybody for coming. It has been 54 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and say a quick prayer and then I'm going to get out of here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will be back next Monday, same place, same time. I'm just thrilled. 
uh, thrilled as punch that so many people are here. This is so exciting. So thank you. My reason for being here and doing this is to give glory to God. And that is the only reason. So I hope that you have seen that. I hope you have, have felt that as I'm speaking. And so now let me pray. So Lord Jesus, we worship you. We praise your holy name, Lord God. We thank you so much for your blood because your blood and your death on the cross and resurrection is the only way, the only way to salvation. It is the only truth, Lord God. And so we, we glorify your name. We praise you and we worship you. And Lord, I want to pray for every single person that has watched this today and that is going to watch this in the future. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would draw them to you, that you would meet their needs, that you would uh, you would uh, draw them into a closer relationship with you, Lord Jesus, and they would be hungry for you and they would hunger after your truth and they would hunger after um, just drawing closer to your heart, Lord Jesus. May we all journey closer to your heart, Lord Jesus. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. I will see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Join Hands with Heaven. I'm Blue Tap. If you don't mind, please do me a favor and like and share this video. It really helps me a lot. And leave some comments as well. I'd love to hear from you and know your thoughts and get to know you a little bit better. Pretty please subscribe and hit that little bell icon so that you'll be the first to know when my next video comes out. And if you're interested in keeping up with me and my writings and my podcast, please join my email list by texting BLUE, B-L-U-E, to 3 three seven 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 and we'll get you all signed up jesus loves you and i love you in the name of christ let's join hands with heaven and do this body of christ thing together have a blessed day and i will see you next time peace read my demon my jesus blues memoir about her suicide out of body death experience and her miraculous healing companion workbook chaos calmed is a guide to christian meditative prayer and spiritual healing both books are available at Amazon.com.